In this crash course, I'm going to teach you all about Markdown, including some things that you never knew were possible with Markdown. So what is Markdown? It's a lightweight markup language. What is markup? It's a set of rules that describes how text should look on a page. HTML is another example of a markup language. So Markdown is a style of writing documents that makes it easy to define what the content should look like. It describes headers, text styles, links, lists, and so much more. Markdown is used all over the place. It's used in documentation, articles, notes, and it can even be used to build a website. I use it to write blog articles, take notes, and if you use GitHub, you'll be familiar with the readme.md files that show up in the root of a repository. That MD stands for Markdown. You can even create a readme on your GitHub profile to really customize your profile page. Here's mine. At the end of the video, I'll show you how I customized mine and how I included different images based on the visitor's color theme. So let's start out with the basics. We're gonna look at headings first. This is a readme.md file, so it's a markdown file. And then to preview it in VS Code, we can click this symbol over here to preview it on the side. And so here we'll see what it will actually look like when it's rendered. So below here, we have six heading variations, heading one, two, three, four, five, and six. So headings start with a hashtag, dollar sign, pound sign, whatever you wanna call it. One is heading one, two is heading two, three, four, five, and six. It's important that there is a space between the hashtag and the words. So if I were to delete that space, then it no longer is a heading. Next, we'll look at a horizontal rule. So if you notice here in our rendered H1, we have a line underneath it, which adds separation. If we want to add a horizontal line anywhere else on our page, we can just add three dashes. This will add a horizontal line, visually separating content. Next, we'll look at text formatting. So first of all, paragraph line spacing is important. So let's hit enter here, and you would think that this would show up as a line break in our rendered page, but it does not. To start a new paragraph or have a line break, there has to be a line in between the text. So now we have two pieces of text here. We can italicize text by adding a star or asterisk before and after the text that we want to italicize. And we can do this in two ways. We can either use the star or asterisk or an underscore character. And that does the exact same thing. We can add bold text by adding two stars to the beginning and end of the text that we want to bold or two underscores. We can bold and italicize text by adding three stars to the beginning and the end, or three underscores. We can also mix and match. This entire text here is bold because we have two stars before and after, but the and is bold and italicized because and is surrounded by one star. And we can also render strike through text by adding two tildes before and after the text that we want to strike through. Next, we'll look at lists. We'll start with ordered lists. So we can say one, this is going to be item one. And then two, this is item two. And let's just do three, item three. And so this renders an ordered list over here. Let's say we want to add another item here. Let's say we wanted this one to be two. And then this is item four. So now we have one, two, two, three. But look over here, it's one, two, three, four. It's rendered properly. So Markdown actually takes care of the actual numbering for you. You actually don't have to number it over here. I could just say one, 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 and it's going to render properly. So then I can easily just change these around and will automatically renumber them for me. Then we have unordered lists. So we have three items here and we just have a dash in front of them with a space. And that's going to render an unordered list. Next, we'll look at code formatting. So here's an inline example. I have some code here within our text that I want to highlight. So I can easily do that by surrounding the code with backticks. Now you can see on our rendered page that the code is nicely formatted. We also have something called fenced code blocks. And so this starts and ends with three backticks. Now within the backticks, we can include our code. So here is a sum function that adds two numbers together. And we can see this is nicely formatted here for us, but we can even take this a step further and define what language this is. And that will add some syntax highlighting. So right here, after the first three backticks, we can define what language this is. So this is JavaScript. I could type out JavaScript or I could just say JS and now it's nicely formatted. So if this was Python, I could just do PY for Python or TS if it's TypeScript. Next, we'll look at block quotes. 
So we just have to use a greater than symbol and then whatever text we want to put in our block quote. And so that just stands out nicely here as a block quote. And we can have multi-line block quotes as well. So we could add, maybe we want a space in between here and uh, then some more text. So now this is all one block quote. We can even have a block quote within a block quote. And so this is nice if we are uh, maybe have a message and then here's a reply to the message and this would nicely format it. All right, next we're gonna look at links. Links generally follow this convention. You'll have square brackets and then parentheses. Within the square brackets is going to be the text that you'll see. So we'll say code stacker, that's the text. And then within the parentheses is the actual link. So I'm gonna say HTTPS colon youtube.com slash code stacker. And so if I clicked on this link here, it would take me to my YouTube channel. Now, alternatively within this, I can add a space and then within quotation marks, I could add a title. So we'll say code stacker YouTube. And now when someone hovers over our link, you'll see this code stacker YouTube title pop up. We can even link to headers within the same document. So let's say we want to link to uh, links. So I'll just say links as the text. And then within here, if I press hashtag, it's going to automatically give me all of the headers in the current document. There's only one header currently, and that is links. So now if I click on this, if this was a longer document, it would bring me back up to this links header. Another cool thing that we can do is have reference links. Normally, these reference links will be at the very bottom of your document. So I'm going to go down here. And we're going to create a reference link called CS and then a colon and then space. And then we'll put our link. So this is going to be HTTPS YouTube.com slash code stacker. So now CS is now a reference. Let's say that I have my YouTube channel URL linked throughout this document in several places. So instead of typing it manually several times and possibly misspelling something, I'll have one reference at the bottom and then I can use this CS. So up here, we can change this one. Now, instead of parentheses this time, since it's a reference, we're going to have square brackets. Within the square brackets, we'll enter our reference link, which is CS. So now if I clicked on this, it would take me to my YouTube channel. And we can again add a title here if we wanted to. We can say code stacker uh, YouTube, just like that. And so now it also works in our reference link. So now we have the pop-up title. All right, next we're gonna look at images. So to add an image, it's very similar to a link where we have square brackets and then parentheses, but at the beginning, we're gonna have an exclamation point. All right, so within the square brackets, instead of text showing up, this is gonna be our alt text or our description text. So if there's an issue with the image and it doesn't show up, this text is what's gonna be shown instead. And also for screen readers, this is the accessibility text. So we can just say alt text goes here. And then this is the actual link. And I have a image here. So there our image shows up. Now if we wanna turn this image into a link, we could surround it with square brackets and then put in parentheses our URL. So we'll say HTTPS codecats dot XYZ. And so now if I click on this, it will take me to the CodeCats website. So far, we've looked at a lot of the basic examples. Everything from now on is part of the extended syntax and not all of these features work in all Markdown applications. Everything that I show here does work on GitHub though. So here's an example of a table. To define a table, we have pipe characters that separate our columns. So we have packages column, description, and version. And after that, we'll have another row here with at least three dashes, and that will define our headers above. And below will be the text included in each column. And these colons here define the alignment of the column. So a colon on the left side defines a left aligned column, which is this one on the left, it's aligned left. Colons on the left and right of the dashes defines a centered column. So this column is centered. And then a colon on the right is a right aligned column. So we have numbers here, so we'd want to align those to the right. Now, just to show you, it, this can look a little messy. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned like this, and it will still render properly. All right, another extended syntax that we can use is task lists. So we can create a list of tasks for us and say whether it's complete or not. So this is a modified list. We still start with a dash and a space, but then we add square brackets with an empty space if the task is not complete and an X if the task is complete. Now, this is not rendering properly in VS Code. This will render properly on GitHub, 
But to make this work in VS Code, we're going to install an extension. So let's go over to extensions here. Let's search for Markdown. And the one that I like is this Markdown All-in-One. So this adds a ton of Markdown functionality. A few key things is keyboard shortcuts to bold and italicize. It will render to-do lists properly. It can auto add a table of contents, which we'll look at a little bit later. It will automatically add dashes for lists when you hit enter and numbers for ordered lists as well, plus much more. So let's install or enable that. And so now you can see this task list is rendered properly. Another cool thing that you can do with the Markdown extended syntax is add emojis. So colon, and then the name of the emoji, colon. Now again, this doesn't show up properly in VS Code. This does work on GitHub, but we can add an extension to make it work in VS Code. Let's go to our extensions. This time, let's search for emoji. So let's add this Markdown emoji. We'll install it. And now it's working in VS Code. There may be times that you want to add a comment into your documentation, but you don't want it to show up on the rendered page. So here's a cool way that you can do that. Surround the comment in square brackets, colon, and then put a hashtag after that. So this comment is here in the documentation, but it doesn't render. And because the markdown was initially a way to make it easier to write HTML, you can actually include HTML in your markdown. And so we can make a toggle by using a details HTML tag. This is just regular HTML details summary. So this is going to be the title of our toggle. And then here's the contents of the toggle. Right now we can't see this in the rendered page. So if we come over here, click on the toggle, now we can see the content. Next, we'll look at a call out. Now this is technically just a block quote. So we have a block quote here. We're going to add an emoji that is a light bulb. And then we're going to bold tip. And then here is an important tip to remember. So just a way to customize the styling of a block quote to make it look like a call out. So here's everything that we've talked about so far all in one readme. And I'll include a link to this repository in the description below. But there's one more thing that I want to show you, and that's how to easily add a table of contents. So I'm going to open the command palette F1 or control shift P. Let's search for table of contents. We can see that this is a markdown all in one extension that's going to create a table of contents for us. And so now by default, it just grabs all of the headings and it creates a table of contents. And we've got some heading examples here. So I'm going to pull those out and I don't want to include the main heading here because that's the title. And then we'll take the rest of this and let's move it over. So now we have our table of contents, basic syntax, extended syntax, all of our things that we talked about, headings, horizontal rule, text formatting, all of those. And so if I click on callouts, it will bring me down to the callout section. And again, these are just using links. So we have the text here and it's linking to an internal heading. So in the background, this is actually getting converted into HTML. So basic dash syntax is actually coming from the heading text here. All of the text is automatically lowercase and any spaces are replaced with dashes. All right, so now let's look at my GitHub profile readme. This is what it looks like in VS Code. It renders slightly differently on GitHub and I'll show you how I built this. So I've got a heading here, introducing myself. This links to my YouTube channel. I've got several badges here, one with my YouTube subscriber count, uh, one with my website with, and shows whether it's up or down. It's always up, by the way. I have my Twitter account here with how many followers I have there, my five star CoStacker VS Code theme, and a link here to my VS Code Superhero course. Uh, then a little bit about me. I'm a husband, father, developer, and teacher. Um, VS Code course. I'm learning everything. Looking to collaborate. 2022 goals to learn more about Web3. A uh, fun fact, I like to draw and play guitar and drums and then check out my NFT collection. Several links here connect with me. Now notice here, it may be hard to see, but there's actually two images. There's duplicated images. There's a dark YouTube and a light YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And I'll show you why that is in just a minute. Uh, here's some languages that I like to use, and all of these are linked to different YouTube playlists. Um, I have my latest YouTube videos here, latest blog posts, and then recent GitHub activity and GitHub stats. Now I'll show you how I did all of this. Let's take a look at the code. So here's the main heading. I'm using reference links. So at the very bottom, I have a bunch of links. Let's go down there real quick. Here are all of my reference links to my website, my course, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and a bunch of different playlists on YouTube. So now I have these badges. And these badges come from shields.io. So you can go to shields.io to learn more about them. 
uh, but this is a YouTube channel subscribers badge. I have my website status badge, Twitter follow badge, and then on the next line, I have VS Code Marketplace, a stars rating on my co-stacker theme, and it also links directly to the theme, and then my VS Code Superhero course and a link to that. So then here's the main content, a little bit about myself here. And then here is the connect with me where we had those duplicate images. So I have a bunch of SVG images and I got these from Feather Icons and I'll put a link to that in the description. So we have a light version and a dark version. Now on GitHub, there's a way to specify which one of these should show up. This is a GitHub specific thing. So it's not gonna work in all Markdown editors. And that's why it looks a little weird in VS Code right now. I know VS Code is working on implementing this as well though. So if it's just an image, so if I took this globe, let's change this one to dark. So if I just wanted one of these images to show up if a user was on light mode or dark mode, I would add this hashtag to the end of the URL. So the URL right here is globe light SVG and then add hashtag GitHub light mode only. And then there is a dark mode only one as well. So now this image is only going to show up when they have dark mode selected. And this image will only show up when they have light mode selected. Now, because I have all of my images are actually links, if I added the hashtag to these URLs, to the actual image URLs, it wouldn't work. I actually have to add it to the link URL, which makes it a little weird when you actually visit my site. It's going to say hashtag GitHub light mode only, but that is the only way that I could figure out how to make that work with a linked image. Again, if it's just an image by itself, this will work just fine on the image URL. So again, uh, these only show up depending on the theme that the user has selected. I've got a bunch of language icons here that I got from Dev Icons. I'll include a link to Dev Icons in the description below as well. And then after that, I have my latest YouTube videos. Now I'm accomplishing this from a GitHub action. And I outline exactly how to do that in this video here. So be sure to check that out if you want to learn more about how to implement this in your GitHub profile. So this routinely runs and every time I have a new video, it will automatically get added to this list. The same thing with my blog posts. I have a GitHub action that runs and it will automatically add my new blog posts to this list. Down here for my recent GitHub activity, uh, again, this is another GitHub action that runs. So be sure to check out that same video and it shows you exactly how to accomplish this. And then the last thing is the GitHub stats. The GitHub README stats is an awesome repo from Anurag Hazra. It has tons of customization and I actually have my code stacker theme on this one. Again, check out the same video to show you exactly how to set this up and customize it. I hope you learned a bit about Markdown. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.